Welcome to Today on 2. It is Friday, the 7th day of June. It's kind of cloudy this morning. We're going to check the weather in just a little bit. A reminder, we're broadcasting live worldwide at channel2coleman.com and, of course, all day long on YouTube. That's right. Now we'll check the weather forecast brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet on Cherokee Avenue. Checking the weather almanac for the 7th of June. The average high temperature is up one more degree, 87 is our average high for this time of year. The average low is 60, the record high 98 in 1977, and the record low 40 in 1998. Sunset tonight at 7.57, sunrise tomorrow morning at 5.35. There's the satellite picture. Everybody has been watching Tropical Storm Andrea, which has moved, I believe, into Florida, into the mainland now, and is supposed to go up the east coast of the United States. There you can see a little bit better picture. Uh, whether or not we'll get any significant rainfall out of that is kind of doubtful right now. Here's our forecast. We do have a slight chance of rain today and possibly thunderstorms for tonight. 20% chance of rain, thunderstorms before 1 o'clock. And a low of 60 tomorrow, sunny, a high of 83, 87 on Sunday and Monday, 88 Tuesday into the 90s, Wednesday and Thursday. There we go with the weather outlook for this weekend and next week. We do have a cancellation we talked about yesterday. The That's senior right. shindig That's right. the senior has shindig. been canceled. That was supposed to have been today. That's right. And the, there is a chance of rain today, so they're going to, uh, I don't know if they're rescheduling, but they have canceled that event for today. Right. So no senior shindig today, and that's always at the uh, pavilion that's at right. Sportsman Lake Park. But they do invite you out to the senior center, um, and they'll have yeah. some activities out there. So. Senior centers will all be open. Okay, this is Friday. That's politics. Who's our guest today? We have Senator Paul Busman here with us today, and we're excited to talk about politics. All right. We'll turn things over to the political panel in a little bit. Coming up next, we'll give away our prizes with our Know Your Merchant ads. At Premier Bank, we are very proud of the long-lasting relationships we have with our customers. We'll go almost anywhere to meet your banking needs. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor our loan program to your specific needs and requirements. Meet the KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. It might just change the way you cook. Induction technology heats the pan and not the cooking surface to offer you a new level of precision, speed, and energy efficiency. Nine settings give you different levels of heat to achieve precise temperatures and amazing responsiveness. Water boils in just seconds, making this the fastest to boil induction cooktop available. The KitchenAid 36-inch induction cooktop. Life lived in black and white is not a life lived. Today, I choose color. To see it. To feel it. To be in it. To be upon it. And to live a life surrounded by it. Today, I put on a fresh coat. Let's see what we have to give away today as prizes. We have coffee from Gelato Joe's in the Warehouse District. We have KSW Colored Salt, which is also available at the same place and at Rumors Deli, and two cupcakes from Frosting's Bakery. Those are the prizes. Let's look at some of our ads. We'll ask you a question, of course, one of our merchant ads. We'll see who we're going to start with today. Should we just make one up? <laughs> Let's oh, here we go. Charisma is available at Doug Dog at Jewelers. 
Women, change their hairstyles, their clothes, and the minds. Now you can change your jewelry with Charisma. In the Tin Shop Heating and Cooling right now, they have a service special going on that is only $39.99. They do residential air conditioning and commercial. Deb's Bookstore, your hometown bookstore just down the road. Browsers always welcome. Gift certificates available. Father's Day coming up a week from Sunday. And fitness opportunities are available at the Coleman Wellness and Aquatic Center. They have a six-lane competition pool and a full fitness center that so you can get in shape for the summer. They also have day pass available for just $10. Baldwin Counseling Center, Dr. Howard Rogers says he can help you with weight loss, individual and family counseling, lifestyle coaching. Help is a phone call away, 256-737-3087. Auto Tech Foreign and Domestic Repair and Service, see David Methvin at his new location in Vinemont, Alabama, beside, Rid beside Ridgecrest Community Church. S'mores is the blizzard of the month at Dairy Queen. Gooey, crunchy graham cracker, chocolate chunks, and gooey marshmallow all in a blizzard. And Mullins Body Shop, you've counted on them for over 50 years for our auto body repair and towing, and you can still count on them today. Call Sunny, Stacy, Beth, or Jim at Mullins Body Shop. Night Free Insurance, located on First Avenue Southeast, voted one of the top 10 growth agencies for the state of Alabama for auto owners insurance, Night Free Insurance. Those are some of the merchant ads we have for today. I'm going to ask the same question we asked yesterday. Which advertiser has a service special priced at $39.99? And we just showed you that ad in here just a few seconds ago. Which advertiser has a service special priced at $39.99? First person with the correct answer received coffee from Gelato Joe's. KSW Colored Salt. What's the color for the month of June? You know what? I don't know. I need to check on that. Should I'll be a bridal it. color, shouldn't it? Oh. Maybe white. Wouldn't that be enough? <laughs> and then we also have two cupcakes from Frosting's Bakery. 256-734-7399 is our telephone number. Let's take a quick look at the weather forecast. Partly cloudy today, a high of 86, 50% chance of rain tonight, low of 68, and uh, cloudy again tomorrow with a high of 83. And uh, I believe we have a caller ready to go. Hello, who's calling? Uh, this is Sybil. And from where are you calling? This is Sybil. Hi, Sybil. From where are you calling? Coleman. From Coleman, okay. Which advertiser has the special at thirty nine ninety nine? Is it People's Tires? No, it's not People's Tires. Think about it. Call us back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do we have another caller? No? Okay. Let's look at the rest of our merchant ads. Mad Dog Mike's Famous Barbecue, located at the Berlin Quick Stop. And they have sandwich plates, rib salads, and more. Homemade sides every day. They can do catering as well. And Brown and Company Beverages, they're a specialty wine and beer store. They have a beer cave, barware, and specialty items. They have a large variety of domestic and imports at Brown and, Com Brown and Company Beverages. Mr. Hicks Menswear has suits and sport coats in regular big and tall sizes. Also slacks and casual wear available. Mr. Hicks Menswear on Compass Way. And Yates Chance Christian Bookstore, it is time for Father's Day shopping so you can get gifts for Dad for all kinds of budgets at Yates Chance Bookstore. They're located in the South Coleman Shopping Center. Tires for Less is more than just tires. They do oil changes, minor engine repair, replace shocks and brakes. See Greg and Mike and the guys at Tires for Less on Highway 31 North. And diabetic footwear is now avail available at Borden Family Pharmacy. This is the Dr. Comfort brand. And you can uh, give them a call at 734-7535 for more information. Allegria shoes are available at Uniform Place. Boy, do these make you stand out. Blue Bubbles is one pattern. Midnight Garden is another one. All available at the Uniform Place. And the Crew Earl's Body Shop wants to remind you to move over for all emergency vehicles. Earl's Body Shop offers large and small towing, local or long distance. They're located on Highway 31 or earlsbodyshop.com. Renard's Gallery and Gifts, an art gallery, a jewelry store, gift store, clothing is available. Of course, custom framing as always. That's Renard's Gallery and Gifts on 1st Avenue Southeast. Those are the merchant ads. Uh, we don't have any birthdays to talk about, but we do uh, our drawing. To give away our birthday prize for this week and let's see 
Our birthday winner is Emily Rainey, and Emily's birthday was earlier this week. She wins the birthday cake from Dairy Queen. Coming up next, we'll look at our community billboards and the weather. At Premier Bank, we're a bit old-fashioned. We actually answer the telephone when you call. However, old-fashioned doesn't mean we aren't up to date. With the latest technology, Premier Bank meets the various needs of our customers. Mobile smartphone banking, internet banking, ATMs, convenient offices. At Premier Bank, we have the right products right now with good old-fashioned customer service. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. A long time ago, a million years B.C. The best things in life were absolutely free. But no one appreciated the sky that was always blue. And no one congratulated a moon that was always new. Oh, it was planned that they would vanish now and then And you must pay before you get them back again That's what storms were made for And you shouldn't be afraid for Every time it rains and it's from heaven. Our community billboards are brought to you by Pepsi and Coleman Jefferson Gas. And the Coca-Cola Summer Concert Series will be at the Recognition Gardens each Tuesday night at 6.30. That's at Heritage Park. Coming up is the Desperation Band, and that will be on June the 25th. And the Coleman First Congregational Methodist Church Summer Revival will be June the 9th through the 14th. They have a set, uh, Sunday night service at 5 p.m., a day service at 10 a.m., and a night service at 7 p.m. This will be Reverend uh, Ernest Lockhart will be the evangelist. And be the sitter that all parents uh, and kids want. This is the Safe Sitter Babysitting Training Course that are going on at CRMC. Their first session will be June 11th and 12th, so call today to register. And our community billboards are brought to you by Pepsi and Coleman Jefferson Gas. If you have a billboard that you would like to send to us, please email it to channel2coleman at gmail.com. Fax it to 734-7680 or be a friend on Facebook, Channel 2 Coleman. The weather forecast brought to you by Mitch Smith Chevrolet. Make the switch to Mitch. It will be cloudy today. We have a pretty good chance of thunderstorms with a high of 83 for tonight. Slight chance of rain, low of 60, sunny tomorrow with a high of 83. There's stuff around your house, but we don't make stuff. We make ovens. Dual fuel double ovens. And they bake so evenly that now delicious is something you can depend on. We only make things for one room. The best room. Your kitchen. We're devoted to it. And you can feel it in everything we make. Nobody knows the kitchen like KitchenAid. Overwhelmed by home refinancing offers from telephone solicitors and direct mail advertising and then find you're not qualified for a specific plan? The Mortgage Center, a hometown lender, compares the rates from all home loan lenders and the qualifications of the various government programs to find a plan best suited to you. The Mortgage Center helps Coleman County people purchase and refinance their homes. This is Pat Moody. Call us today and let us tailor our loan program to your specific needs and requirements. At Premier Bank, we take pride in serving our community. We respect our customers, and we've won awards for our ethical conduct. We're motivated to do all we can for you, and we're interested in your banking needs. We're efficient, safe, and sound, and our relationships with our customers are second to none. At Premier Bank, we put the customer first. Welcome to That's Politics on a Friday. What were you saying about your grandpa there now? My grandpa, <laughs> Rafe Drake, uh, was in that uh, war, and he got, uh, he applied for pension. They gave him a pension, a dollar and fifty cents a month. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, 
in addition to that, he talk, said something about the river a while ago. From uh, he got hit in the Battle of Fallen Timbers, he got his no the nose partially blowed off, and they sent him home. Said, "You get well, come back." Well, he got well and decided didn't want to go back. So his head uh, colonel called and said, "You come back, or we're gonna put you up against a tree and kill you." And so he built him a boat and went up the river. And as he passed through the Decatur area up the river. The north is on the uh, north side shooting at him, and the southerners are on the southern side shooting <laughs> at him. So he had a hard, but he finally got through and got back to his outfit in uh, Virginia. He could be a legislator with both people shooting at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, welcome this morning, uh, Senator Paul Bussman. Thank you, Paul, for coming well, in to talk with us this always morning. Always good to be here. Well, <laughs> Senator, they don't do that in Montgomery, do they? No, they don't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the kind of treatment. That's right. <laughs> Considering what you do have to deal with, I imagine. Uh, but let me ask you, how would you characterize this past session? I think the session, policy-wise, we got a lot of really good things done. Uh, Procedure-wise, we had a tough time. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the procedures and the policies that we passed, the new legislation that we passed, I think we had some very good legislation. Uh, but the process to get us there was was ugly, and and you know we we passed about in the Senate, we passed about 40 bills the first 29 days, and then we passed about 150 the last day of the session, and so that's kind of the way it, it worked out this year. Uh, we got the important stuff done, but uh, you know we can work on the on the process as always. Yeah, boy, this is this was an interesting session. All the things you were trying to accomplish. Uh, the uh, the appointed superintendent bill was one that did not come easy, and I know that there had to be some a lot of work the last day of the session, and you took the lead and made sure that it, that it happened, as I understand. Well, it. part of the problem was we, as a delegation, didn't want to make that decision without having the representative in place right. that took place of uh, uh, Representative Odin. Uh, and so that slowed the process a little bit and it didn't allow us to get the legislation in as early as you usually do with local legislation. Uh, once uh, Representative Shedd was on board, then we started moving it. Uh, and that was about the time that the Senate started getting into even a bigger quag than they were to start with. Uh, the House got it done earlier and so we, uh, it got to the last day and we finally got it passed about 20 minutes before the end of the session. Uh, and it was a, it was a tough situation to get through. But I, I firmly believe that's going to be the best thing for the for the students of Coleman and Coleman County. And and uh, I'm excited that it got done and, and look forward to it. There was a little talk going on locally about the fact that that the two of the state representatives from Coleman County uh, forced the present superintendent of education to say that he wouldn't run again if the bill passed. Did you now the the discussion that I had that I know of and the discussion I specifically had with Superintendent Coleman yeah. was we didn't want to make a political decision that would put him in office indefinitely yeah. and and that would not look good and it would not be appropriate and so yeah. the conversation I had with with uh, with Superintendent uh, Coleman was if we do this there will be a search and, there, and you do not have an intention to run for that position and, and that was the agreement that I got from him uh, because you don't you know he could run again and win he hands down I mean he's we know that job. he's done he's a got great job 16 section uh, land and all that and a lot of people are that strongly for but, but we can't uh, you know you can't make a, a political move like this that's so important to the kids uh, and it make it look like it's for one person and, and so that, that was the discussion we had and I, I don't think, uh, I think Mr. Coleman uh, is very honestly looking to fix the system in, in Coleman County. Uh, the system is working pretty good right now under him. Um, but, you know, it takes a pretty big person to come out and say, I'm willing to lose my job uh, for the betterment of the students. And I think that is a, is a, is a remarkable thing that, that Mr. Coleman has done. Yes. There was a, a bill that passed that required doctors to prove their citizenship, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I believe the, the deadline for that uh, requirement for proof was maybe last week or week before. And there was a, a lot of doctors who were balking at that. But do, do you remember that bill and how it I came don't around? remember that specifically, but, but since the uh, immigration bill passed, uh, 
a year or so ago, uh, every organization now has to prove that they're that they're uh, a legal citizen or have legal papers to be here. Uh, the dental profession is that way, uh, and the optometry profession is that way. It's just all of them are doing, and it, it probably just happened to be the medical profession this time that was was up for sunset, and that was the concern that was that was brought up. Yeah. The uh, what does it look like regarding Alabama's immigration bill and the fact that it's now law and is it is this something I can't remember is it before the Supreme Court is this being reviewed it it still is is being reviewed uh, the Supreme Court has decided not to hear part of it right uh, so part of it we know is 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 dead until they decide to hear something on that uh, there are still other states that have similar legislation that will that will possibly affect our legislation uh, but I feel like right now the way the immigration bill is set today is probably the way it's going to be uh, it's going to stay which one of the things that you did you feel proudest of regarding uh, uh, the legislature in this session I think one of the one of the biggest things we did uh, I think there's a couple things uh, first off you know we heard a lot about the accountability act and mm -hmm. and that whole issue but there was one bill that that passed that has had very little uh, uh, information put out on and that was the Accountability and Intervention Act. Uh, it's different from the Accountability Act. It would allow the state school board to take over a school system if that school system was failing mm -hmm. and if that school system was not doing what was needed to correct that failing situation. Uh, and I think over the next 10 or 15 years we're going to see that to be a tremendous boost in fixing our, our failing systems. Uh, you know, there, there's a process that they'll have to go through to do that and the, and the system has the ability to fix the problem themselves. But if it's obvious they're not going to do that, then the state school board has the, has the opportunity now to go in and take over those systems for those kids. And I think but that's going to be a huge thing for, for some of these kids that are in, in unfortunate situations. Do they have, a, do they have a, a system laid out as to what a failing school is? They're working on it right now, yes. I, I, know, what, I know I saw the superintendent of education of the state say that he, nobody had told him yet what a failing school system what he consisted well, of. He was, he was supposed to have had the A, B, C, D, E, F system already in place, and he's refused to do that. And so uh, part of the problem is uh, he has a responsibility to determine whether a school is A, B, C, D, and F, and that would determine whether a school is failing. But he was to have that done uh, in January, and that's not been done yet. And, and so the legislature is looking at him to do his job, before, and that will clean up a lot of the information that we've got about about failing schools. And so, you know, he's got a responsibility he's got to do, and, and I would expect if he doesn't get that done by the next session, then the legislature will will take some action to make sure that gets done in a in a more in a quicker fashion. His his his, his thing was that they had a school system that they, under a six year program. The first three years it looked bad. But the last three years, it looked great. Right, is what he right. illustration he had on. And, and those are, and those are some of the issues that have to be looked at. That's putting common sense into the into the process, right. and we need to put common sense into every process. You know, you can't set right. specific guidelines and not look at uh, if you've got a school system that's improving over three years but still falling just a little bit below. You know, you don't want to take those school systems over. You don't want to cause those school systems to have any problems in a short period of time they're going to come out of that failing situation because they're going in the right direction and so we have to look at that and I think with his help we can do that and make sure we're not classifying a school failing that's really not failing. The, uh, what about the gun bill? I thought y'all did a pretty good job on that. I, I think it turned out pretty good. There were some parts of it that gave me a little heartburn uh, you know but when when push comes to shove people have a right to to bear arms uh, Mr. And Henry had a lot to do with that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And and we had a we had a Senate version, and he had a House version, and and we finally got together on both versions, and and so I think that'll be a, a strong uh, support of the Second Amendment. Uh, but like I said, you know, we've got uh, different groups that want certain things, and and sometimes you can't make all those groups happy. Well, the uh, sheriffs seem to be happy yeah, with we, the bill, and they were concerned about the Senate version, and I can understand that. But the uh, once we got to the to the mix and get them both together. Uh, the sheriffs were on board, the, the uh, Rifle Association was on board. I think the only person that really wasn't on board was the was BCA, the Business Council. They were concerned about uh, firearms on, on business property, and I can understand that. Um, 
But you know, when you have people like we have in Coleman that travel late at night to work in, in Decatur, in Huntsville, in Birmingham, uh, you know, for their protection, they carry a weapon. And, and nobody would, would deny them that right. When they get to the business, what do they do with that weapon? Uh, you know, do they park their car across the street or the parking lot? Uh, so, uh, you know, we feel like if, if it's in your car, it's, it's locked in your car, then, then, you know, the personal protection from them getting to and from work was more important than, than worrying about somebody having a, a, a problem at work uh, with a firearm. So I think it was, a good, it was good legislation. Uh, I think we'll probably, as any legislation, you know we'll have to tweak it once we see how things uh, go into effect. But, but for the most part, it turned out very well. Y'all have really got a lot to do. The next session, you've got a lot of problems and things that's got to be solved, right? We've always got problems that's got to well, be solved. Well, always that's Mary Montgomery, but I'm talking about yeah. you've got your school problem and yeah. then you've got and, and a lot of problems it, and all that. A lot of it is, is financial problems. Uh, you know, we, yeah. we've got to do something with the budget general fund, especially education's doing okay right now. Uh, hopefully the, the federal government will pass the inter internet tax uh, which would which would really boost our uh, general fund. Uh, that's a very strong disadvantage to small business, especially here in our area, uh, where people will go into a store and they will look at items, they'll try on the item, they'll they'll get everything they need to know, and then they'll walk out of the store and go buy it on the internet and save nine percent or even more. Uh, and so those are concerns that I have for small business. If we don't level that playing field, uh, the small businesses are really going to struggle to. Uh, to make it and keep their head above water. If if that sort of uh, law were to pass, that there would be sales tax charged, you're still missing some of the taxes, right? In other words, the business wouldn't know how much the tax the Coleman County would have or Walker. Or well, yeah, the, the counties would, yes. The counties would probably miss, miss the tax. The state would get the, would get the, the state tax. Right. Uh, but, yes, you'd probably miss the city and the county taxes, but it would still... More, it would level the field uh, for some of these companies that, that, you know, for instance, Rob Warner. You know, you can go into Rob Warner's and look at, at a canoe or a, or something like that, and, and then you can and then you can go on the internet and, and buy that same canoe. And if that canoe is six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars, you know, you're saving a substantial amount of money right. not paying the tax on that. And so that's not fair to to somebody like Mr. Warner who who's trying to run right. a business that somebody can go and purchase that at a cheaper price just simply because they're 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 doing it through the internet and everybody knows you're supposed to pay tax on on internet purchases anyway mm -hmm. but we know that most people don't <laughs> we're well, out of time gentlemen i i, I, I was going to ask him a question about, about that the situation that it, uh well now off the chain of thought so <laughs> sorry it'll come to you as soon as we yeah. sign yeah. up yeah. i'll be back so we'll, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> to you next time. Oh, i know exactly what it is just a the governor, as I understand it, uh, passed a bill or had a bill passed to start a payback on that trust fund money. That's that, that was the first thing we did, and we promised. I told you that was one of the things well, that I, I was going to do. I appreciate y'all doing that. And that was the first bill we passed this session well, that's a, to start the payback to the trust fund. That was fund. a good bill. And so yeah. That's, yeah. that will be done. Thank yeah. you, Senator, for joining us. This Glad to be here again. Appreciate he, it. Uh, Today on two, that's politics. Y'all going to have trouble with the family. In the nation, our agents are always there, helping make sure that when your life changes, your nationwide insurance coverage changes too. We put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation where protection is personal. Nationwide is on your side.